Hey guys, so this week I've been playing Xenoblade Chronicles, which is finally out now for the Nintendo Wii here in North America. It's been out in Japan and Europe for a while now, but it's finally making it its way to our shores. So the question is, is this game worth it? Is it worth the wait that all the people who've been signing petitions and angrily writing letters to Nintendo, is it worth their wait and their time? Well, here's my opinion of Xenoblade Chronicles. Xenoblade Chronicles is a game with a lot of history going for it. It's a game that was released almost two years ago in Japan, and only just last year was released in Europe, and it just didn't seem like it was going to come to America. Despite the fact that they'd already translated the game into English, and there was just so many people who wanted this game in America, Nintendo of America didn't seem like they wanted to release it here. So after months and months of petition signing and angry forum posts, the game is finally released in America for us US Wii users. So what is this game anyways? Well, Xenoblade Chronicle is a Japanese RPG that's kind of a return to form to the, the old days of the Final Fantasy while still innovating a little bit. In the world of Xenoblade, two giant titans, uh, Mechanos and Bionos, were like fighting forever and then they like killed each other and stopped and froze, and then their frozen bodies are where everybody lives. Everybody lives on like the remnants of these two giant titans. All the humans and creatures and stuff live on uh, Bionos and all the like robots live on Mechanos. And obviously because it's a video game, the robots and the humans hate each other and want to kill each other. This leads to years of war and battle and strife and killing and all that stuff until finally like about a year before this game began there was a big battle and the humans won and it seems like the robots are all gone and that's where we meet our main character shulk who's just this engineer guy who's like running around building stuff and having dates with a pretty blonde chick that is until surprise surprise the robots return and attack everyone he loves shulk and his pals take up arms against the robots and shulk actually gains possession of the monado which is like this ancient sword that is like perfect for killing robots and while the sword would kill most people who pick it up, Shulk seems to thrive from it and can actually access its hidden power of precognition to see what happens before it happens. Using the power of the Monado and his friends by his side, Shulk must venture out into the world and try and find a way to defeat the Mekon. Unlike a lot of Japanese RPGs, this game does away with the turn-based battle system and goes with more of a real-time battle system. When you engage an enemy, you have a bunch of different moves that you can use against him at any time, but the moves take time to recharge, and so you basically have to hit your moves and then wait for them to recharge while your guy auto-attacks. And to keep things a little bit more interesting, some of your blows have to hit on certain sides of the enemies, like there's a side attack and a back attack, so you actually have to move behind or by the side of the enemy to inflict the maximum amount of damage. And while you have a party of characters fighting with you, you don't have direct control over their actions. You can focus them on certain targets, but basically they kind of do whatever. Unless, of course, you've built up your group meter enough to initiate a chain attack, which is where you, know, you and your party do a chain of attacks, one after another, to inflict the maximum amount of damage. You can also switch which character you are in direct control of. You don't have to be Shulk the entire time. You can pick up Rain or any of the other characters if you want to play as them throughout the game. The game itself is fairly linear. You, know, you go from one place to another. There's a clear chain of events that you have to follow. But there are quite a number of side quests that you can pick up along the way to help supplement your leveling experience. And the leveling experience is pretty easy. Like, all your characters level up with the main character, so you never have to worry about, oh, this character's too underpowered compared to all my others. This one's 13, whereas everyone else is 20. But you're going to want to do a lot of the side quests because unfortunately it's the kind of game where you will be running along and then you'll hit a boss and the boss will just stomp your face in because you're not high enough level. So then you got to go back and grind a few levels and do some side quests in order to have any chance of fighting the boss. Thankfully, even though it's a Wii game, there's no motion control, but if there was, I imagine it would be along the lines of punch yourself in the face repeatedly to beat this boss. The game itself offers some interesting challenge, and the combat system is, is not all that hard to wrap your head around, but has a lot of depth in it, which is interesting, but it's not my type of game. I never really played any of the old Japanese RPG classics like Final Fantasy or Chrono Trigger or any of that stuff growing up. And as I got older, I jumped into more action-y RPGs like Morrowind or Vampire the Masquerade. So I always really have a hard time jumping into these Japanese RPGs because a lot of them just feel like I'm doing math homework. As far as the Japanese RPGs go, this one feels a little bit more accessible to me personally than some of the other ones, but it still follows a lot of the tropes that I don't like. And while it has 40 bajillion hours of gameplay and a massive world to explore and stuff, collectibles and quests and all that stuff that you can do, it doesn't really appeal to me because it's, you know, not full of blood and guts and boobies and all that stuff that, you know, my inner 13-year-old loves. I think it's safe to say that I didn't really like Xenoblade Chronicles, 
but I didn't hate it, and I don't think it's a bad game. I think it's just not my type of game. There are plenty of games out there. I don't, I'm not a big fan of Japanese RPGs. I'm not a big fan of sports games. There's a lot of games that I just don't personally like that doesn't make them bad, doesn't make this bad. If you're really into like Japanese RPGs, like old school Final Fantasy, stuff like that, get this game. You've got a Nintendo Wii and you've been waiting for an RPG to come out, but this is probably the only one. Well, Last Story comes out later this year, I think. But you've been waiting for this one, might as well pick it up, unless you already pirated it. Uh, in which case, you should buy it anyways, because, you know, if you don't buy this, then they won't make more of these games, which I don't like. Which, ugh, that's, the duality of that is kind of weird. I don't know if I... Anyways, buy this game, I guess.